if this is your first time on This Disc is Great with Steve and Nate, I think we are on episode, what is this, Evan, 44? So episode 44. So what we do is we take a brand new release disc like the Latitude 64 Explorer and we take it out to a field, we chuck it a bunch of times, see how it flies, try it on some different lines, some different angles, and then we uh, take that footage, we edit it up a little bit and show it to you guys so you can get an idea of what it flies like. Um, we pretty much do it as our excuse to throw new plastic without having to pay for it. Um, and we get to make a nice fun show out of it. So Steve, we, what do we have this week? Brand new release from Latitude 64. This is the Explorer. <clears throat> so this is Ricky Wysocki's new signature disc. He helped design it, so he's got a little bit of, he was in on exactly making it fly the way he wanted, and he gets a little bit of money out of each one of these that you buy. So this is Ricky's go-to fairway driver nowadays. Go ahead. All right, so we've got a number, we got the numbers. Uh, the speed is seven, the glide of five, the turn is zero, and the fade is two. So fairway driver, average glide, Shouldn't have any turn and uh, have a nice predictable fade at the end. Uh, so the said the straight flight path and controlled glide is what the Explorer brings. Designed to be the workhorse for all kinds of accurate fairway drives, the stable and versatile fairway driver has been developed in cooperation with world champion Ricky Wysocki. Now I watched Ricky throw this in before we even had the disc, and I was like, oh yeah, I'm I'm pumped for that. So uh, I was really excited to get out to, to, to go throw these. Yeah, and so we, um, we, have, we had them in the special edition burst. So we've got one of these left, and we'll give it away throughout the show. And then we've got the Opto um, that is what they are currently released in. And I have like 40 more of these on the way. Um, we're out of stock right now, but I have more coming. So a couple different plastics. We'll see if they flew any different for us. Um, Steve, based off those numbers, what does that immediately make you think of? T-Bird. T-Bird. Um, that's the same numbers. has the same numbers as a rival from Legacy. DD doesn't really have anything in the set because it's not a thief. The thief's flippier. Right. Um, and then I don't know. I don't know Discraft's fairway lineup well enough to give a good. It's not quite a Predator, um, but it's somewhere in that vein. Um, yeah, I've only ever thrown a nuke and a nuke SS, and then the buzz, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so yeah, it's a stable fairway driver. Um, but yeah, those are the kind of what, those are the exact things I would be thinking of. So let's, uh, let's take a look at some videos and see how the sucker flew. Oh, giveaway. Yeah, yeah, we did. Uh, oh, yeah. So we'll do a giveaway for the farthest backhand. So guess Steve or Nate how far you think the backhand went, and then... Um, so, somebody, whoever guesses closest to that will win the special edition Explorer, the first one. And then, a couple random commenters and people who ask questions will win this Diamond Wizard and this Opto Explorer. So, ask good questions, make comments, interact with us, and we will uh, give you some free stuff. Red Eye. Hit Steve's up first. We shall what? see. Finally, I'm back. <laughs> yes. Ooh, fancy graphics. All right, so our, our typical Steve Heiser. We like to Heiser over here, guys. Um, so 316. I was like, this this needs to go at least 300 for me to throw it. Like, I would. I feel comfortable with my mid range at peaking at 300. So nice, easy. That's a straight line in reality. So, like, it came up, but it landed in that straight line. Great fairway shot. 316, yeah, I was totally happy. With that's that. not flipping up on you, nope. holding that hyzer. That's solid. Yep. <clears throat> Go right ahead. Okay. It feels so good to be the first throw again. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the Opta one, so it's definitely not flipping out of that. That's holding that hyzer the whole way. Um, but penetrating forward up to 326 for a fairway driver on that steep of a hyzer, yeah. that's pretty good carry for me. Um, I'm tr usually pumping my fairways for, uh, not for, 350-ish. Um, but so on a hyzer, that's a good far distance for me with no flip up, really reliable fade. That's probably ending 25, 30 feet left of the tee pad. So again, it's got enough beef that it's doing things. Yeah.
getting her a little flat. Yeah, that least, was like the blue one. <clears throat> at least do it lower and with a little bit, not as overstable disc. So that just really punching it up the gap. That would be something where I've got a ceiling, and that was perfect. Where I can trust that it's not turning over from that decent hyzer, um, and that's just that is right how I feel comfortable releasing that disc. That's that basically every throw I ever throw off the tee pad ends up being in that hyzer hyzer shape. So being able to trust that it's money, it's absolute money. Getting closer to flat, but it's still holding that hyzer the whole way. Um, this is a little windier day. We actually had a, had a decent amount of headwind, yeah. but it wasn't quite a headwind. It was blowing like corner of the t like a little head cross a little bit. So yeah. my it's holding my hyzers up in that headwind. So that one I threw slight hyzer and it just held that hyzer the whole way. The wind kept it up. Getting all the way up to 355. I mean these things, it's. These are real easy for me to throw controlled 350 foot shots with. I'm, I was loving these. These are really solid. Um, I could replace my rivals with these and not be missing a thing. Um, there, it's a really solid disc. It, it's, I'd say the zero turn seems to be pretty accurate. We'll get yes. more to the numbers later, but it definitely has that two fade. It's really solidly, reliably stable. And this is that same day with that headwind. So I'm consistently hitting 300 with this disc. Knowing that with a certain power, you're not going to go too far, but you're not going to short it. So having, having just something that I'm, I'm knowing that I'm able to take and, and hit a ton. Of. And we've got some courses where if you don't stay within that certain amount of area, you might as well have tried to roll it because you have about as much luck as catching something in the air as you do something to roll. And I'm not a big roller, so knowing that I've got a 300-foot tunnel shot, I'm just like, yes, finally, something that I can trust. I don't have to chuck it way up high. And it seems glidier than... I mean, five is pretty high. It yeah. only goes to six, unless you're using funky gateway numbers. Well, we can um, try. But... Uh, I think it's important to point out too, like this had some headwind on it, and you see in that shape where, uh, yeah, throw that back again. You see right, you throw it, right there, it starts to flip. Like that's starting to turn over. We'll play it out. Yeah. Starting to turn over, but then recovers and still hyzers out. So the headwind flipped it a little, but not all the way over, and it still came out. So it is reliably stable. There's and flat. yeah, that's flat and low because I'm trying to stay under the wind. And the, again, the wind flipped it for sure. And that's the funniest looking flat line we've ever had because it was just dead straight the whole time. Um, having to keep that low and flat. See, it is drifting a little bit right. But again, that's mostly headwind doing that. And it, but again, it's not turning over and rolling. It's not flipping uncontrollably. I still had complete control of that disc straight out to 322. Super solid, happy with that. Another flat shot. This is the not windy day. So again, the burst one is, a, generally I found this to be true. Burst tends to be a little less overstable than whatever plastic of its normal components would be, especially this flex plastic they've been doing a lot of the burst stuff in. So I got a little bit, threw it flat, turned a little bit, but again, that reliable fade at the end, right at Steve's face, <laughs> exactly where I want to be hitting, 321, right where I want my fairway drivers going. Happy with that. This one I felt like in that calm weather, I was finally able to get on it. I See, that's, that's almost, almost 50 feet more than I'd been getting. Uh, I wasn't able to work with the wind on the, that, on the other days. But this one, just grip it, rip it. And the fact that it didn't pop up from, from that much hyzer, it's only a seven-speed disc. And I was really getting on them. But uh, I can't say enough about this disc, honestly. This, this disc, uh, 
great. It just does great things, guys. <laughs> And that that's that is the shot that I need from my fair my straight fairway, and that that is just punch it straight up. I'm not worried about uh, trying to spike it in because I know I'm going to stay in the air long enough to get to my target. And just uh, I just this was great, dude. I just thought it was great. that's <laughs> Is that all we have back up? Oh, I got some more handers. That's more of a grip lock than an Anheuser. Yeah. But, but it was still, a great grip I'm ripping that thing, super grip lock, and it came back at the end. Just kind of stayed. Um, yeah. yeah, like it's... it's just stayed and then ba basically started to slow down and just kind of dry. I, I ripped something that... I over-ripped something that much with most things, and it's rolling yeah. that way. Um, I, I mean... It, Grip locks are hard. Like there's, there's it just goes why, <laughs> um, and so it still got out there. But yeah, so it's it took that over cooking it, it took that over torque, or, that over off axis torque, and didn't flip over. Held it and came out at the end. So pretty pretty reliable, which was I was surprised with. I expected it to flip on something like that. That's the Annie we wanted. The first, yeah, that's, last that's one. the actual Annie shot. So that was again, I think, back that up real quick. So I think that was the blue one. Yeah, that's not the orange one. So um, the blue one is the slightly less overstable one. So I put it on that Anheuser angle and it held it, glided over, and then it's hitting the ground flat, which on those big turnover shots is really what you want. Mm -hmm. Super easy to control on that turnover. Um, it's going to hold that line. If you put it on enough Anheuser, it'll hold that line, but it's still coming out. I'm not rolling it like I might with, say, uh, Archon or something like that. No, well, I was trying to think of something else. Full girl, or I guess Sidewinder is going to roll probably from that angle. Um, super controllable. Some sidearms. And yeah. this is the windy day still. You can see the bouncing. I do not flick... Anything, any fairway drivers except for my Firebirds or like my Felon. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, I was forced. I was forcing my hand to throw this on Heiser, but the fact that I wasn't rolling my wrist just was was all I was really looking for. So I had a couple that uh, just completely turned over. So having some that at least made it 230, that's about all I need. Honestly, I, I, I feel comfortable with the straighter shot or. There may be some kind of turnover, but just popping it out there, hey man, it, as long as it fades, that's, that's really what you need. So, this is that windy day again. We threw all the flicks on the windy day, and I was really scared to put this flat. Because I expected in the wind, for if I threw it flat, it was going to flip over and burn. So, I kept putting it on hyzer, and it kept going way right. So like it was being more reliably stable than I expected it to be. Um, 243 with a fairway driver on a sidearm. Um, that's right about where I'm hitting anyway. A little bit of hyzer, and it just held that hyzer and kept it the whole way. So especially into the wind, I'm pretty happy with, with that throw. Hard to complain. It's more controllable than I expected it yes. to be on a sidearm. Let's see what else we got here. Hi, Wooly. See, this is what I'm talking about. I had a hard time like trusting it flat. Um, but yeah, same kind of shot. That's the flippier one. Even into the headwind, it didn't flip over. Um, nice and straight. Just bouncing a little bit in the wind. I don't trust my forehand in the wind a lot. It's like my forehand's gotten a lot better in the last couple of years. Well, I weeks. still, <laughs> I still don't trust slamming it into the wind, and so I was a little tentative on these. But that's the flight I want yeah. out of this disc. Oh, that's all of them. All right, so I, it's probably not my go-to forehand disc necessarily. I'm probably still going to slam on a felon. But if I want something to go a little straighter on a forehand with a felon, this would work really, really well. 100%. Um, but, yeah, I prefer more overstable discs just to account for my mistakes on my, um, my throwing. So, again, Steve, what were the numbers on this guy? 7, 5, 0, and 2. So how, how do you feel... Do it flies numbers wise. I thought I thought those were spot on. Even though we were throwing into a bit of a headwind, uh, 
I still did not get any turn, any high speed turn coming out of that disc. And I thought the fade was spot on. Like, yeah. uh, Latitude just redid their numbers as well. So this is using that new system, and I think they're spot on. They just updated some of the numbers and some of the discs that are not as consistent with the numbers yeah. as they wanted them to be. Um, I mean, I, I think the numbers are pretty close. It feels a little fast for a 7, but that's right on the line. Um, 5 glide is pretty solid. It's not super, super glidey. It is kind of falling out of the air towards the end. It has no turn. I agree with that. And you could go back and forth between like a 2 or a 2.5 fade. It's, mm -hmm. it's really close. Um, it is reliably overstable. Um, but yeah, like Steve said, I used to say that you needed to adjust Latitude's numbers. With most of the changes that they made, they're getting a lot closer to being spot on, and I think this is right there. Um, I trust the 2 fade on this. Really solid disc. Does fly a lot like a T-Bird or the more stable versions of a rival. Um, it definitely would be on the beefier end of my rivals. Those tend to be a little straighter. Um, but it's a really solid disc. It can, especially for forehand lines, or, or not forehand, backhand lines, and you can really work it, do a lot of things. Really solid disc. It's a really good addition to Latitude's lineup. They didn't really have anything that was quite like this. So it's a really good good addition to what they have. Evan, you got some questions over there for us? I got a list of questions here. Sean Pavel wants to know any reason why you pick this over a T-Bird uh, aside from manufacturer. Having not thrown T-Birds in years, it's really hard to say. Um, I mean, if you like burst plastic, it comes in burst plastic, so there's that. Um, I have a T-Bird, uh, and I've just recently taken it out of the bag. It's light, so it's been getting beat up by the wind, but it just felt more overstable and not as glidey for me, that specific disc. So this one, <clears throat> I felt just kept moving on the path that I wanted it longer. But I would kind of say generally no. Um, they're identical discs for yeah. the, not identical yeah. like they're they're so close there's no reason to have both um it's one or the other whatever i mean they if one of them fits your hand just a little bit better those kind of things it's it's hard to say uh let's see i got a couple more here uh logan luther wants to know how will this fly with a fast arm versus a slow one um Faster arm speeds, like Steve or I are higher, are definitely going to be able to get this to go straighter for longer. Um, and we're going to be able to work, like, if you have a slower arm speed, you probably aren't going to be able to work it as many lines as we were. Like, your Anheuser's aren't going to be able to pan out as well, those kind of things. Um, but I think this is going to be a solid disc for slower arm speed players, especially for those kind of shorter drives with headwinds, those kind of things. What do you think, Steve? If you're throwing a river and that stays super straight for you, I would say this is going to get you that fade that you might need on a windier day. So for people that 350 is a, is a pretty good average for them, this disc, you can throw any, you can throw it on hyzer, you can throw it flat, and it's going to basically follow whatever line that you're really trying. When it's more overstable, uh, my dad, he throws the archer, and then he throws a leopard. And the leopard is still hysering out on him before he gets like to 250. So and that would be my turnover disc if I yeah. was throwing it. So this disc would, I would, not let, I would not give him this disc for, for his birthday and see, be like, dude, this one's going to be your bomber, just because he doesn't have the arm speed yet. So yeah. there's, there's pros and cons for everyone, but I would say higher speed, go for it. Lower speed, this is your overstable disc. Catherine Nall and uh, Thomas... Marcus want to know, would this disc have a, have a place in the bag for a newer player? Is it good for a newer player? I mean, that newer players are going to be finding, uh, go along the same lines as what we were talking about with the lower arm speed player. <clears throat> Most newer players have lower arm speed, so it's not the first thing that I'm going to hand you, but if you're building a bag where, like, you've got a solid drive, like, I'm going to hand you a river is probably going to be the la my latitude disc of choice or that leopard, those kind of things. But this would be a good addition for um, windier days or things where you, places where you need to go. You need that harder fade. Most people need some extra turn to get a little extra glide and distance. Um, when they're lower arm speed, but this would be something like a newer player or a lower arm speed player could use this the same way that I use a felon. So for those more overstable shots um, or those where they need to fight a headwind, this could be the use for a newer player. But no, if you're going to get one driver, this isn't the one driver I would hand you.
Uh, Tyler Rigoroso, Rigoroso would like to know, would you recommend this disc for wooden courses? Yeah, yeah. Just straight fire? Yeah. yeah. I mean, to get it to fly straight, straight, you do have to put a little on it or throw it flat. Um, like it's not going to flip up, but I throw my rivals on wooden courses all the time because I can hit straight lines with them, and that's what this is for. Now, it's, are, uh, actually, Milton wants to know, do you guys bag any explorers? I have two. Have two. I am not. Um, I have a pretty set bag, and I very rarely make changes to it. So it's got to be something that blows me away. Um, but he has seen how mine fly, and he's like, hmm. I mean, I could swap these out for... The reasons I don't change my bag a lot is because I have to have something that's so much better than what I'm already throwing because I already have a stash. The change, like, the change is so minute that this, he's, he's like, nah, it's just better to stay with it. If, like, if I had to switch to all latitude, this would be what would go in my rival yeah. place, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't feel lost. But I have a stash of like five rivals, so I don't, I'm not going to buy explorers to replace this I already own. So, I mean, I could throw this super easy. Like, well, I say that on a lot of this, but really this, I could go straight to this as my fairway driver of choice and be super Sean solid. wants to know, grip-wise, which one felt better, the burst or the optical plastic? Um, mm. I think the I, burst it, is... The, the feel wasn't the what I look for, per se. When it comes to champion versus star, like destroyers, I feel like that the champion just like is too slick. But yep. between these two... I felt it was fine. The flight path was the biggest change. This one is grippier, which may have led... To, like, that's... So burst tends to be grippier, too. Um, especially since this is X-Blend Burst, yeah. which so it is the flexier plastic on purpose. So it's got the little extra flex to it. Um, so that extra grip lets you throw it harder because you have more grip, and so that may be where some of the understability is coming from. So the burst is a little grippier than the Opto. Cool. Yeah, go for it. Um, Tony wants to know how would you compare it to a River Pro? Uh, Ooh, it's been a while. I didn't think the River the, Pro had much glide, honestly. I didn't like the River Pro no. very much at all. I'm going to be honest. Um, it's it has le I'd say it's less glide, more overstable. Um, this has more glide. Um, and it has that finish at the end, but the river felt like it was fading as soon as I mm -hmm. threw it. Um, there's a place for that shot. Um, this is. I'll be honest, this is what I wanted the River Pro to be when the River Pro came out. Um, the River Pro is a lot more of like a felon type disc. It's not quite a felon, but it's, it's just close. slow, slower. Yeah. Um, so that has a place. It's probably an. I would trust the River Pro more in a forehand than I would this disc. Yeah. But um, this is going to get more distance, have more glide, go a little straighter. Uh, let's see, I just got one, I got a couple more, but this is the most relatable question. We'll move on to giveaways, but, uh, what is your guys' favorite Latitude 64 disc? Ballista. Goes far. I used to throw ballistas before I threw, um, strikes, and they go real far. We're talking in the group that ballista and the, and the score go well together in the back. Yeah, uh, especially the ballista pro. Um, the ballista pro is a little more reliably overstable. Um, it's not quite as much of a bomber as the original Ballista because it is more over... Well, for me. Um, for the Touring Pros, it's their go-to bomber disc right now because it just... You can mash on it. Um, I would say the Trident, back when it was in production, the good flat-topped Opto Tridents were awesome. They brought back the wrong ones. But, Steve, did you throw much latitude? No, honestly, like, the, the first thing that came to my mind was the Falchion, which is another fairway driver that I really liked... Uh, Two, last year or two years ago, like when it came out? Two, not last year's Trilogy Challenge, but the Trilogy Challenge. So, but I got it last year. It's really nice, understable to straight. And then I would say this. The fact that I put two right away, I was like, Leopard, you're out. Uh, <laughs> it's not even the same disc. No. It's not doing the same thing. No, but for the the, the idea of the shot that so I wanted. Yeah. people said they replaced it with the, with the Leopard. They replaced the Leopard I, with this. Interesting. Thing. Interesting. Just a little more. Uh, um, did you see who got closest distance guess? Okay, so yes, I did. We were some discrepancies awesome. because some people had guessed right hand back, but we did get an exact winner. Awesome. We guess twice. I'm going to scroll back. Down. Nate, 356 the on a longest, backhand. The longest was Nate, 355 back. And I do believe there is a winner. 
Do you think it was Sean Grew again? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sean guessed, but he didn't, he didn't get caught. <laughs> Do, 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 do. This is why you write things down, Evan. Um, All right. Well, I could ask you to do another. Well, while we do that, so I'm going to. What are the numbers on the Explorer? We have people showing up late. So the Explorer has a speed of 7, a glide of 5, high speed turn is 0, and it has a fade of 2. It's the L Ricky T Bird. The is Ricky what it T is. Bird. It is the Ricky T Bird. Um, and I know, like. The pros obviously have to push the plastic that um, is new and coming out, but like legitimately all, all the Lad 2 guys are throwing this disc. Like it's not just like, hey, this is a cool new disc, but no, like they're all throwing it a lot. Um, and I'm hearing really good things from all of those guys. So it's a good disc and they flew off the shelves. Like we don't have any in stock right now because they sold out in like three days. So I've got more coming. And you can pick them up. We got soon. people asking for us to hold on to them to get the <laughs> local guys, and so we're like, "I'm gonna try," but you know they're gonna pop off the shelf just like last time. So, hey, if they're if they're selling, that means something's right. Just like when the Shrikes came out, those, keep those oh my goodness, stock. those Shrikes were just like hotcakes. It was awesome. Did you get all the comments on there? We'll have to find it because I. Um, it doesn't allow me to scroll anymore. Ah, that's weird. All right, so we can go back and do that later. Um, it's we cutting me off, too. There's a winner, and we'll, 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 we'll get you. you. Um, so we need to pick a couple more winners. Um, how about Hunter Raglan? He asked Explorers, Explorer versus T-Bird. We kind of talked about that. Um, you're going to win the Opto Explorer for your question. Um, it's, they're really, really close to each other. Um, pretty, pretty identical. Um, discs. This may just be a t again. I haven't thrown a T bird in like six years, so it may just be a touch faster, but really reliable. Same kind of shots. And I'm gonna just scroll randomly and pick somebody. Random scroll winner for the wizard. For the wizard, uh, Robert Diker. Robert Diker. Oh, he had a great question. Oh, okay. Well, I just I I clicked on his thank you comment thank just you, now, Robert. so that, he's gonna win there. All right, so guys, uh, make sure you tune back in next week. So next week we're going to do AVRX3, I think. Have we done that one yet? I think that's in the list. Okay, AVRX3, then the week after is the Ballista Pro, and Ballista then Pro. I have a bag full of things that we need to go what through. Give them a sneak peek. Uh, we've got the H3V2, we've got the H5, we've got the H1V2, we have the Rat, we have the um, Tantrum. Um, which I like a, when I, once I finally get on it, got on it, I liked it a lot. Um, it's, it's got a huge rim, but uh, I think that's everything that's in there. Oh, the captain and the maverick. I am excited about those two. I really, li I want to throw the opto ones and see how they compare to the, the burst ones. But uh, yeah, I'm excited about those. Um, yeah, this was episode 44 of this. This is great with Stephen Nate, the Latitude 64 Explorer. We will uh, see you guys next week. Thanks, guys.